The Federal Water Pollution Control Act, adopted in 1948, was the first federal law passed to protect rivers, streams, lakes, and other bodies of water in the United States. In 1972, Congress made comprehensive changes to the law to enhance efforts to protect the nation's waterways. Once amended with these revisions, the law became known as the Clean Water Act. A principal component of the 1972 amendments was established of the basic structure for regulating discharge of pollutants into the waters of the United States. This new framework made it unlawful for anyone to discharge any pollutant from a point source into navigable waters unless a permit is obtained. The law defines point sources as discrete conveyances such as pipes or man-made ditches and includes concentrated animal feeding operations in the definition. A key requirement of the Clean Water Act is the establishment of beneficial uses of waters such as recreation, wildlife habitat, or a source of drinking water. For each of these beneficial uses, agencies responsible for implementing the Clean Water Act are required to develop narrative or numeric water quality criteria that must be met. Narrative criteria are used to express a parameter in a qualitative form. One example of a narrative water quality criteria is the following. Surface waters shall be free from floating debris, oil, scum, and other floating materials entering the waters as a result of human activity in amounts sufficient to be unsightly or cause degradation. Numeric criteria specify the precise, measurable levels of particular chemicals or conditions allowable in a body of water. While this type of criteria is required when addressing toxic pollutants, they are also used to establish thresholds for non-toxic pollutants to protect against potential human health or ecological risks. The discharge of pollutants is controlled through the issuance of permits through the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES, permit program. While the Environmental Protection Agency has the ultimate authority to enforce the Clean Water Act, the agency has authorized most states with the authority to administer a permitting program. States must demonstrate their permitting programs meet the standards established by the Clean Water Act and the NPDES regulations in order to be authorized by the EPA. While the amendments passed in 1972 included concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs, in the definition of a point source, it wasn't until 1976 that the regulation defined which facilities were CAFOs. Under existing regulations, any poultry or egg farm operation that confines more than the following thresholds is required to obtain an NPDES permit if the facility discharges a pollutant into a water of the United States. Occasionally, state permitting programs are more restrictive than the federal requirements. In these instances, facilities that might not otherwise be required to obtain a federal NPDES permit are required to obtain a state-administered permit. For instance, in Maryland, every large animal feeding operation is required to have a state discharge permit issued by the Maryland Department of the Environment. State permitting requirements should be reviewed carefully to ensure your facility is adhering to the appropriate regulatory obligations. Contact information for the various state permitting programs can be accessed by visiting the following website. When properly managed, manure is a beneficial source of organic matter and nutrients, and when applied to crops and pasture land, according to the agronomic requirement of the vegetation being cultivated, the phosphorus and nitrogen contained in the manure is utilized by the current crop or crops soon to be cultivated. If manure is over-applied, nitrogen and phosphorus levels that exceed the plant requirement build up in the soil or move to surface in groundwater. Continual over-application can bring nutrient concentrations to levels that exceed the soil's binding capacity. When this occurs, precipitation-related runoff can transport these nutrients downslope and potentially into creeks, streams, rivers, and lakes. The Clean Water Act includes an agricultural stormwater exemption provision that exempts farmers from needing an NPDES permit associated with a precipitation-related discharge of manure, litter, or processed wastewater to waters of the United States from a CAFO as a result of the application of these materials to land areas under the CAFO owner's control. In order to receive the agricultural stormwater exemption, the manure, litter, or process wastewater must be applied at agronomic rates. To assure this occurs, farmers are encouraged to have a Nutrient Management Plan NMP. If the operation has an NPDES permit, the Nutrient Management Plan, or NMP for short, is required. 
This plan, written specifically for their farm, takes into account, among other things, manure volumes generated, regular soil testing, nutrient requirements of crops to be grown, timing of nutrient application, appropriate handling and storage of manure, litter, process wastewater, and mortality. Without a nutrient management plan and written records to demonstrate it has been followed, it is difficult, if not impossible, for a farmer to verify that manure, litter, or process wastewater have been managed in a way that ensures the nutrients are utilized by crops or pasture. In fact, in some states, the absence of a nutrient management plan immediately assigns liability for discharging pollutants to surface waters. If your facility is subject to NPDES permitting requirements, you have two options to comply. The first option is to submit a notice of intent for coverage under a general NPDES permit. The general permit is written to cover a wide category of dischargers that generally require the same operating and monitoring conditions. A form titled Notice of Intent is typically submitted to the permitting authority for your state. The Notice of Intent requires the submittal of basic information specific to the farm. This includes, but is not limited to, the owner's name, address, location of the production facility, a topographic map of the area where the farm is located, and a copy of the farm's nutrient management plan. Additional information required on the Notice of Intent may include the type and number of animals raised, animal confinement methods, manure generation volumes, manure handling, and storage structures. Although the process will vary from state to state, once the Notice of Intent and additional required documents are submitted, the regulatory agency will provide a public notice of a facility's request for permit coverage. The public notice allows individuals a specific length of time to review the NOI and accompanying documents, submit comments that pertain to the permit, or request a public hearing. Generally, if the information submitted on the Notice of Intent is correct and the additional required documents are in order, the permit coverage request will be approved. The second type of permit issued is an individual permit. Individual permits are issued when the state has not issued a general permit or when conditions specific to an individual facility are not appropriate for a general NPDES permit. EPA or a state regulatory agency may also require a facility to obtain an individual permit if the facility is located within an impaired watershed or the CAFO facility is located in a protection zone of a sole source surface drinking water supply. A permit does not allow an individual or a facility to discharge pollutants indiscriminately. However, permits can protect a farmer from criminal and civil liabilities associated with discharging pollutants, as long as the farmer follows the permit requirements. Permits can require implementation of best management practices, as well as monitoring, testing, and sampling, which help the farmer document that he is in compliance. Failure to follow all the requirements of the permit would be a violation that could result in an enforcement action. This is why all animal feeding operations, including those defined as CAFOs and those defined as AFOs, should prepare, maintain, and implement a nutrient management plan. While the CAFO rule requires only CAFOs that discharge to have an NPDES permit, the absence of an NMP may open the CAFO to enforcement because the agricultural stormwater exemption could be lost if an NMP is not followed. EPA's concern for water quality has placed a focus on CAFOs obtaining NPDES permit coverage. If conditions dictate the need for a permit, it does not mean a farmer is polluting. Instead, it can provide clarity for the farmer and the public by identifying objectives that aim to mitigate pollution. Following the requirements of the NPDES permit, as well as any additional local or state rules, demonstrates the farmer's commitment to the environment. Additionally, it can protect him from serious financial, legal, and social liability, as well as improve the public's trust in agriculture. This message was brought to you by the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association. Funding for this video was provided by the International Poultry Expo. Please support our exhibitors and we invite you to attend.